basically, web design is separated into two parts, the front end and the back end. A lot of times, back end is more classified as web programming and not so much web design. But nonetheless, it's really great to know both sides, not just to be a designer or a programmer. Usually, uh, you know, it's better to know how to design, but then also how to program it. Now, when you hear the term code, you really just imagine a bunch of lines of jibber jash that you really have to kind of wrap your head around and just kind of just keep stuffing more and more code in in order to create a successful product. And that's really not the way it works in web design. In web design, there's many, many different languages, and uh, it all starts with the basics, which are, in my opinion, for the front end is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and for the back end is PHP. Now, there are tons of more languages that branch off from these. There are tons of more that are on their own that all do many different things, but I think these are the four basics that every single web designer or web programmer needs to know. Now, the reason why I say web design is a little bit different from other coding is uh, because they really all work together to form this fully operational website. So, for example, HTML is your base. It contains a, pretty much a listing of all the elements that are going to be on your page. Then you take that and you move over to CSS. CSS styles your page. It tells the browser, you know, make this blue, make that text red, something like that. JavaScript uh, is the functionality. So if you want something to pop out from your screen when you hover over this object, JavaScript can do it and PHP can do many many different versatile things it can you know it can validate your forms it can store information in a database it can pretty much be the backbone to any website so when you put them all together it really isn't as bad as it seems because you have just little bits and pieces that form this whole big thing when put together so let's just take a look at the rundown for the series. So we're going to start off learning HTML and CSS. Those are the first two languages we're going to learn. And after those are fully complete, we're going to start creating a design in Photoshop. Um, or if you don't have Photoshop, that's fine. You can use GIMP, even Paint, whatever you'd like. Um, and we're going to create a nice design and code it for the browser. After that, we're going to be adding a little bit of JavaScript to our page. So we'll learn a little bit about how JavaScript works and then start off placing it on our page and figuring out what we want to do with what, how the functionality should be incorporated and stuff like that. Then at the end, I'm going to go over a few things with PHP. Now just note that if you plan on skipping right to the PHP part of this series, do note that it is important to fully understand the consequences of using PHP as well. As it is a back-end programming language, uh, this also means that people can ex exploit it to hack into your website and just maliciously use your code against you. So before you put out a fully working version of a website using PHP, make sure you fully understand what each line of PHP code does and also figure out if there's any way that people can exploit the information on your website. We, we will be going over a little bit about PHP safety and how to keep your website free from hackers when we get to that point in this series. But for now, if you go to the bottom of your page, you will see a little tiny hotbar type of thing. Uh, it's basically YouTube's way of showing you all the videos in a series. You can go right down there and select the next video and continue watching.